Welcome back to the channel. Jim here. Thanks for joining. Today's incident is about a DM nightmare, which ended in 60 seconds of absolute terror. We're going to talk about an incident that happened, and in that incident, it explores the issue of the power balance between a DM and a dive center. This story happened when the big dog was not the big dog. I was the brand new little pup. I was a DM contracted for another dive center. And this is an incident where there was a customer diving who definitely shouldn't have been diving. It should have been a refresher situation. How much power does a DM have to push away uh, a customer who probably shouldn't be in the water? That's today's exploration, stand by. Here's the situation I was in. I had a diver who had a long layoff, probably wasn't that experienced, had a long layoff. The dive operator, booked this person, accepted this diver's reservation for the trip. I was stuck with this diver. What the diver really needed was a refresher. And what I ended up was, you know, being kind of one-on-one -on -one with someone who had no business being in scuba equipment alone at the time. I, I was weak and I got, I allowed myself to be uh, pressured into that situation. It, it turned into like, kind of like a refresher on the go, but let me tell you how that went. Uh, this diver, Diver W, Diver W had a long layoff. I don't remember how many dives this person had how many years they had laid off, but clearly there were indications that this person was a classic candidate for a refresher. But it, it just was not possible on that weekend, on that, on that particular dive day at that location before it just wasn't possible. And I was pressured by the dive operator to take this person uh, on the dive. It was a boat dive. We went out, did the first dive. I don't remember which dive was which. We, we probably did, did two dives. And a funny thing, at, at this dive site, it's really unpredictable, but, but very often what would happen is you'd have the first like 10 meters of water would be terrible, terrible visibility, um, like particulate matter, like broken pieces of kelp and plankton, just 10 meters of nothing, no visibility, zero visibility. And then you get below that and it's crystal clear, <laughs> but dark -er, because not a lot of light is, is getting down, but beautiful. And there's a lot to see at this location. Soft corals, there's a wreck there. It's just beautiful, gorgeous. I'm with Diver W. Diver W's all over the place. I mean, I, I have to, I'm constantly grabbing that they're losing their buoyancy up, losing their buoyancy down. I'm, I'm just constantly like almost holding hands with this diver. I'm like, oh my gosh, you know, it, it was more of a discovery dive than, than an actual guiding a dive. At, at one moment, I remember <laughs> so we're going along and I'm just, you know, grabbing and grabbing just all, all this instability. And then, and then suddenly at one moment, like, Diver W is really stable, and I think, wow, for the last couple minutes, I haven't had to rush over and grab Diver W. And I'm looking at Diver W, and I'm like, oh, look, it's stable. And I look, I look a little closer, and Diver W is missing a fin. Diver W has just just one fin on. And that was scary enough. But what, what was even more shocking, I, I motioned. I, I had a light. I motioned down to Diver W's feet. Hey, look at your feet. Is something missing. And Diver W looks down, and is surprised. That scared me because if any of you have ever lost a fin, it's pretty clear <laughs> when your fin is gone, it's a very big difference, right? A very big difference. It's, it's hard for any of you, I think, to imagine that, that someone's not going to know that their fin is missing. So that blew me away. Later on, as it turned out, those fins were floating fins. And we got back to the dive boat later and they had Diver W's fin. The second dive was really scary. Diver W was, was relatively stable. As I said to you, there's that, that zone of, of literally the top 10 meters. It's, it's quite a bit. And I was with Diver W. I can't remember what the situation was, but we were getting near whatever profile we were on or pinnacle or something. We were getting near the invisible zone and Diver W got away from me and disappeared in the no visibility zone. And I was like, and I bolted up, I'm looking, I'm looking for Diver W. I, I go up, I go up to the surface, I, I hit the surface, I'm looking around and I don't see Diver W. And then thank, thankfully I look and bang about 10 meters away from me, Diver, Diver W surfaces and Diver W surfaces and then spits out the regulator and I just see blood coming out of Diver W's mouth. So I don't know what you're thinking about right now, but me, my mind went right to the worst possible scenario that, that Diver W had lungs exploded, right? That Diver W came up with his or her lungs closed, holding his or her breath, came up to the surface and the lungs exploded. And this was like blood from that 
lung explosion. And I was inside, I was freaked out. So I'm swimming over to, to Diver W, just hoping, and I'm saying like, Diver W, you okay? Are you okay? Because I'm thinking, what is it like if someone's lungs explode? Because, you know, I assume they can't talk. But actually, I assume they're unconscious because that would be an embolism. Usually you'd get air into your bloodstream that would, you know, essentially be a, a blood clot in your brain. So, you know, I'm swimming over and Diver W's moving and, and I said, Diver W, you okay? And Diver W's like, looks really freaky, but it's like, I think so. And I was like, would exploded lungs person be able to talk? I don't think so. So I'm starting to get like some hope, right? So I grab on the Diver W. I tow Diver W to the boat, take Diver W up on. And then I notice that in Diver W's mask is blood also. And oddly enough, that, that started to give me a little more hope. I, I knew Diver W's lungs weren't exploded by now, right? But I knew still something bad could happen. One thing that I often see with divers uh, who haven't dove in a while is that, I don't know how it happens, but they'll end up with like a semi nosebleed into their mask because nasal passages aren't used to whatever because it's been a long time. I don't know, but this is definitely something I've seen enough. Even back then, I'd seen it enough to know that that's something that happens to people who haven't dove in a while. So I started to have hope and that luckily that was the last dive of, of the day anyway. And you know, Dabber W was evaluated, the, the five minute neural exam, everything, everything was fine, was asked if you want medical services, everything checked out. There's a hospital nearby that Dabber W declined, Dabber W was fine, uh, elected not to. But years of my life were erased as I was swimming over to Diver W with the blood dripping out of the mouth, wondering what had just happened and what I'm going to encounter when I get over to that diver. It, it was one of the worst five, 10 meter swims of, of my life. Sweat pouring to interior conflict. It was, I needed a drink after that one. So post up below, does anyone have something like that where something went down and you, until you started it out, you thought something really bad had happened and you didn't know until you got there or until it played itself out. You didn't realize until then, oh, I dodged a bullet, man, dodged a bullet. Because yeah, that could have been much worse, right? I mean, that could have been, that could have been a lung injury. And, and you know what, truth be told, lesson learned, I allowed myself to be pressured with that, you know, never again after that, uh, you know, you know, Careful out there. I'd love to hear any any stories if you could post them up of like, you know, that because I know there's there's always that dynamic between the dive operator, between sales and fulfilling sales of any business. There's always going to be a battle because the sales end of, of any operation, its job is to sell as many products or seats or services as possible and that they may not all be qualified customers in terms of the implementation side. So I've definitely run into that. Maybe you have, maybe you want to post up about that. Thanks for listening. Uh, like, share, subscribe. we are glad to have you along on the channel. See you on the beach next time. Uh, do they teach beauty queens how to manage risk? Because you suck at it.